Good morning, it's Lois. It's another day. I'm still working on my purple imaginary imaginary purple butterfly dress. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm completely happy with it, but we'll still keep going with it. So I, I showed you a video of me tackling the first section of this piece of fabric and this piece of fabric is 56 inches by 84 inches. I wanted to paint the entire fabric uh, for a dress and so I, I kind of mapped out where the neck hole is going to be and so forth but I'm not going to actually cut the fabric until after I steam it and fix it and hem it and so forth. Um, but I've kind of mentally mapped out in my brain how the design is going to go and how I'm going to incorporate my pattern into this design. So for right now I, I'm able to do it in sections and I think that I can do this in about three sections. Um, I finished the first section so let me show it to you now. Okay so here is the first section as I've done it and as you can see because my frame is not big enough to accommodate this entire piece of fabric I have to work it in sections. So I'm going to do the right half of the butterfly, or the left half of the butterfly, depends on what perspective you're looking at it. And then I'm going to do the left half of the butterfly, and then I'm going to do the top of the fabric, which would be actually the front of the dress. Um, so I painted this background, and I apologize again for my second video of me doing the background because it was very out of focus. Um, I painted the second background, and I put some kosher salt to add a salted technique to the background. And you can see that when, when you put the salt down, it kind of gives this starburst effect. You have to actually put the salt down while the background is drying. So once once the dye is dry, the salt is not going to have any effect. What, what ends up happening is the salt granules will um, attract the water and kind of create these starburst effects. I'm not necessarily sure I like this. I may alternate some sections of salt treated with not salt treated. We'll see how it goes. We're kind of playing this by ear. A lot of times I come into a project and I think that's ex this is exactly what I'm going to do and I lay out my pattern and I trace everything and it's all traced out by the time I stretch it. But this one's kind of working as I go, taking into account the size of the fabric, my design, what I want it to look like, and the ultimate garment that I'm going to be producing. So now this side is done. It's dried because it's a new day. Um, you can see I'm in a new outfit too. And uh, I will disassemble this right now and then I will stretch it out so that I can work on the left side. Okay, I have no idea how this looks, but um, I have I have stretched the second section of this fabric out so that I can paint it, and you can kind of see why I put the resist lines here, because then that gives the silk something to come uh, butt up to without. Uh, if you if you paint um, dye, wet dye on top of dry dye. It, it's something that it's a phenomenon that I know watercolorists know really well. As, uh, people have different names for it, but it's kind of like blebbing. It just kind of creates a very uneven, sort of nasty looking line. So I try to avoid that in, if at all possible. If I have to stretch in multiple sections a uh, canvas like this, then I like to draw out my resist lines in order to prevent that from happening. And now you can see why I did this butterfly pattern in a half of a uh, half of a wing set, so that I can flip it over. I drew it onto tracing paper, so I can flip it over, and I can actually pin the next section up and make sure it's lined up properly, um, so that it looks good on the dress. So I'm going to pin that up now. So now you can see that I have um, pinned the 
other half of the butterfly wings flipped over to the underside of the fabric. You can see the pins here. And I've tried to make it line up uh, like the other side as far as the height of the bottom and the top of the wings to make sure that the fabric matches up on both sides. Now this is, you know, but butterflies or anything else natural is organic. And so you're not going to have perfect symmetry, although it, if that's part of your design, that's perfectly fine, but that's not part of my design. In this case, I tried to make sure that the uh, pattern was centered so that the center of the butterfly would run up the center of the fabric, um, but I underestimated. So I have this kind of very sh narrow margin here at the end of this wing. So when I trace it, I'm probably just going to cut it off a little bit here um, so that my resist line is just a little bit shorter. So the wing will be a little bit shorter on this side, but it's like I said, nothing in nature is perfect. And that's why I like natural subject matter because uh, everything is very organic and you don't have to apologize for uh, things like non-symmetry and other stuff. So. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to trace these lines. I'm going to start. I'm start going to start the time lapse photography again, so you can see me in action. And I'm going to approach this side exactly the same way I approach the other side. Number three, we're working on this uh, imaginary purple butterfly dress. Right now I have two sections done and I have the last and final section which would be the front of the dress. But I've taken this off so you can see exactly how it's coming about. Um, this left set, last section that I did was the left section here. And it was a little bit more sparing with regard to the salt. So I just put a little bit of salt on the top, but I kind of did some uh, weird sort of abstract designs rather than try to do talk salt technique around the whole thing because I thought that was too busy. So these are the first two sections and I will finally paint today, day number three. 
this front section here. And this will actually be the front of the dress. So I mentally, I mentally split this up so that on this particular dress, you have a front section and, uh, and I believe that this is just going to be background that's coordinated with the back because the back is really what counts and the back is going to be this butterfly. And hopefully if you're wearing this, it might just be a long poncho or a romana because of the size because I believe it's not 84 but it's a 72, I'm not sure. Um, that this would make a great Rowana or poncho. And then when you when you stretch your arms out from the back, it looks like a big butterfly. Ooh. Anyway, that was my idea. So I'm going to finally do work on the last section. And rather than do it situated this way, I'm going to do it this way. That way I can do it in section three sections instead of four. 